Hello and welcome to the NBS Show, Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. The hardest part about growing up is going through puberty. Oh my. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that isn't, that's true, that's true. Um, also joining us is Tara. See, the thing for me is that even... I, I don't sound like I went through puberty. You did it? Really? Really, I figured you just had a higher voice before that just shattered glass. Ouch! That hurts. <laughs> so does the sound of shattering glass. Not really. Every time when I hear glass shatter, I always remind, it reminds me of Stone Cold Steve Austin or Mick Foley. But I, I care the talk to you. You sound fine. Eh, I don't know. I don't feel like my voice is that deep. Not everyone's voice is meant to be deep. True. I mean, I can't be as deep as yours, but you know. <laughs> Not everyone can have the smooth baritone oh yeah baby yeah no no not everyone can be dusty (laughs) (laughs) why well we learned something new about you norman what i ship ship it (laughs) there we have it and it far in the distance sweetie sweetie bloom is likewise shipping it so there you go. You are shipped. So Congratulations. what do we call this? Do we call it Dusty Sanzo or Norman Cat? <laughs> Ooh, Norman Cat. Uh, hey. Because Norman has an, an actual cat. Yeah. So it's it's double meaning. <laughs> yep, double entendre. Uh, so anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 22, Growing Up is Hard to Do. In this episode, the Kirima Crusaders are magically transformed into grown-ups. And they discover that growing up the right way means gaining experience and wisdom that simply can't be rushed. Okay, that's interesting. But anywho, before we start, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, to be honest, after the events of uh, The Last Crusade, this can feel a little ho-hum. This is now them just as characters, not as uh, their profession or their their goal which in some way it's really nice to see because we they these girls have wanted to be treated more like adults especially in more recent seasons but at the same time it's it doesn't have as much of an emotional resonance so it's fun but not like the deepest of ideas although we do meet one of the creepiest creatures in all of equestria what was it oh what did they call it they're they're pets the whirling dervish tasmanian devil with the with those blank, un- soulless eyes staring at you. Does this look like the face of mercy to you? That's not a word. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, okay. I will eat your souls. Oh, <laughs> uh, you mean that Funko Pop? I am the <laughs> Funko Pop. <laughs> anyway, Tara, what about you? Uh, I mean, first impression, it didn't really leave much of an impact. Like, I didn't really remember much of it. The only thing I remembered is that, you know, hey, the Crusaders, now they look like adults. And uh, there's that big creature. It's like, oh, okay. That's, that's pretty much all I remember. But I feel like this is like almost a season one or two episode because the, les- the lesson is pretty much about waiting to grow up. And with how the CMC has been through with them teaching in the uh, friendship uh, school, I don't know. Like I said, didn't leave much of a pressure on me. Hmm. All right, all right. And as for me, this episode was one of those mandatory episodes where, oh, I'm a kid. I wish to be big. Oh, I am big now. Oh, I learn lesson. It's it's kind of mandatory because we had it in almost every show that exists. I can't really remember most of them because. Uh, wait, Gummy Bears. Gummy Bears has one. Um, what? There's, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Faraday Odd Parents. There was one there too. What else? What else? Hmm. You got any examples out there? Sudden growth spurts. Hmm. Does Thundercats count? I mean, although Lino did stay that way. Uh, hmm, well, probably, but I don't think that that one counts. Does it? Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. I think it's interesting when you think about it. He grew up, but he didn't mature. I think that's a theme we can talk about there later on. Anywho, 
uh, before we head into the episode, uh, if you have not watched this, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the show. So, let's get right into it. So, we start off the episode with our main heroes planning or had planned their trip to Appaloosa to go to the Appaloosa Country Fair. They plan almost everything except for a chaperone because they're still babies and babies can go out on their own. Boo hoo. Crusaders are babies. <laughs> Who brought all these babies? <laughs> All of I you are babies. <laughs> uh, I expect a crusade, but instead I get babies. <laughs> uh, and Sweetie Belle has a temper tantrum. Like, wow, she, she needs to control her temper. Funny enough, I guess she is the rageaholic of the <laughs> uh, Crusaders. Yeah, she, she's she's bucking that chart. Like, damn. <laughs> well, I mean, she's the one who. What was it against Rumble? Oh. She's the one who first engaged in a shouting match. <laughs> and she's the one who got pissed off at Rarity so much that she sabotaged Rarity's work. Oh, wow. <laughs> Makes me so, wonder how she is at playing video games. Sweetie Rage. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, yeah. Kind of sounds like we're talking about Sweetie Bloom when you say Sweetie Rage. Well, you never know. Uh, but anywho, uh, I, I don't think there's anything to summarize there. Um, they're just well. They don't. They didn't find a chaperone. So next thing is to look for a chaperone. So they ask Rarity. They ask Rainbow Dash. They ask Applejack. They ask Fluttershine Twilight. And all of them say they're busy with their responsibilities and they can't follow them to Appaloosa for the country fair. You know, there's one pony missing from that list. Fluttershy? No. Wait, no, no. Oh, it's Pinkie Pie. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Let's face it, after the, uh, she's too busy with the Cake Twins. Even though, well, let's say say they're not. Let's say she's not. I don't think they... Let's say she is. Uh, let's say she's not. Because I... I think the CMCs are well aware that if you want to go anywhere with Pinkie Pie, you need to have insurance cover it. If not... <sighs> no. Just no. But funny enough, she the, the CMCs didn't even try uh, Trixie or even Twilight. No, Starlight. How well do they know those two? Mm, true. Yeah, because I recall last time the CMC saw Trixie was the Magic Duel. Hmm? True that. True that. Hmm. Good point. And I don't think they've ever even talked to Starlight. I mean, <laughs> I could see like... The Crusaders want to rumble. So you don't like cutie marks, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. So I'm just going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think overall? Well, it's a, somewhat of a pretty standard setup. Establishing, cut it, closing down lines of communication. Making us wonder, making them wonder, huh, how are we going to get around this plan? And I think it does speak to a kid's frustration of wanting to go somewhere to to really be uh in control and yet you're still waiting on the authority of a grown-up to let you go or drive you or you name it yeah those frustrations are relatable for a child that is true and tara not really much to say here for me as well just basically the usual setup with um uh... A plot involving little kids. They want to go somewhere, and the adult says no, and the and then the little kids like, "You can do anything you want. You're an adult." It's like, yes, I am an adult, but it also means that I can't do anything I want. Like Twilight, for example, she says, "I can't find how to uh, work on this flower." <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. That is true. She did say that, and I guess the kid has this. Well, most kids have this. A uh, fantasized view of being an adult where they think that adults can do almost anything we, we they can uh, there's no limitations to what they can or cannot do and i guess that's true to some point have any of you felt that before when you were younger to a certain extent mostly wanting to be able to go out hmm. all right tara you no yes I guess. I mean, there were times where say I wanted to go out somewhere, and they say no. I'd be like, "You always say no." 
Yeah, and then when you grow up, now you say, now you know why they say no because they're freaking tired from work. <laughs> well, I mean, now we can't go out because uh, the coronavirus is now the grown up. You'd be like, I want to go to this place. <laughs> no, you can't. That's a different story entirely. <laughs> but anywho, continuing on. So, uh, with while they were at Twilight and Fluttershy, they were looking at this flower or Twilight and Fluttershy were looking at this flower trying to decide why is it dying and why couldn't they figure out a way to fix it and whatnot. So Fluttershy and Twilight goes to the library to look for a solution to the problem. So while the grown up are away, the CMCs are just lamenting on how small they are and wishing they were big. And all three wish the same wish and suddenly they are enveloped by petals and they grow big. They, they, they are an adult now. They are 18 years old and higher. Yay. Actually, now that you say it, that is a story of a kid becoming an adult early. Mm -hmm. Big. I know. Starring, um, who was his name again? Tom Hanks. Yeah. Tom Hanks. I remember that one. I, did you know there's, there's an alternate ending to that movie? I did not. Did he? Does he choose to stay an adult? No. Uh, okay. He. I, I always remember this movie for its ending, but whenever I see it, there's a different end. Oh, tangent. Sorry about that, but I just need to share this. And this is a spoiler for the movie Big. If you guys haven't seen it, go see it because it's awesome. Anyway, What's the name of the movie? Big. B I G. Big. Oh, tor Torterra, you make me feel old. I've never heard of this movie. Oh, stop making me feel old, Torterra. You are old. <laughs> no, Norman, Torterra's making me feel old again. <laughs> stop it, Tara. <laughs> but you uh, wish you feel young. <laughs> oh, word. <laughs> uh, anywho, so the end, the, the the ending that's on TV most of the time is uh, him and his friend walking away from the camera, just doing stuff like they're just talking but the ending that i remember is that he's in class and he there's a new kid in class and the new kid is the uh girlfriend that he knew when he was an adult so i'm just really confused with how that show or movie has that kind of ending that i remember so wait, she sought out the same thing and wished to be young? Yes. Well, now that's a bit creepy. I don't know. That, that's why I remember. That's, that's why I remember that ending because I thought it was cool. Kind of thing. I, I don't know. So was it me only or did I? I've never seen that. Really? No. Damn. I don't know much about it. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe. No, apparently you don't, you young and <laughs> upstart whippersnapper. So, oh boy, anywho, um, where were we again? Okay, uh, there are... We were going to order Torterra to watch Big. Yeah, go, go watch it, Tara. It's, it's a really fun movie. Oh, I mean, Silva got me to watch that one movie. Yeah, I forget the name of it, though. Which one? I forget the Citizen name, but King? it involved with the, the guy saying Rosebud. Citizen, Citizen King. Kane? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna have to make you watch so many movies, <laughs> all the movies. Kung Pao into the fist. You... Let's do another review. <laughs> hey, at least I saw all the Star Wars movies. That's not a compliment anymore. Yeah. Okay. Anywho, uh, so the CNCs grow big, and they decide that hey, um, this is not right. But let's go to the fair. Woohoo! Yay! So they rush down to the train station and hop on the train. And there's a big musical number about how they are an adult now and nobody can tell them what to do and stuff. And while this song is happening, you can clearly tell that they got no idea how being an adult is. And the adults are looking at them as, oh my God, look at this hipster jerks. Oh. I don't know. Do ponies even have hipsters? Have you not seen Fluttershy in that one episode? Well, I, that's hippies, not hipsters. Oh, oh, wait, no, you... you okay, that one... Oh, no, she was woke. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. Oh, boys. <clears throat> the only other hipster pony I could think of is... Um, 
What do they call her? Vinyl? Vinyl? Vinyl Scratch? I mean... Not hipster. <laughs> trender hooves? I oh, maybe. Yeah, trender, yeah, probably. But... Yes, we, as we explore pony hipsterism... <laughs> oh, no, stop, let's go. So, anywho, after the song ends, they stop at the wrong train station, and they stop at Hazy Junction. Uh, technically, they're lost, and they see the creepy train conductor with the voice. Oh, no. Who was last seen in The Sounds of Silence. Apparently got reposted. Yeah. Or maybe or maybe there's one of him at every train station. It's like, he comes from a very monotone family. <laughs> I Yeah, I, I'll go with that one. That, that's much more fun. <laughs> I am one with a collective. <laughs> oh. Anywho, so... The creepy train conductor comes about and tells them that they're in Hazy Junction. And if you want to go to Appaloosa, you could go through that murky swamp and not get lost. Here, let me draw a map for you, which he does. The CMC decide, oh, um, should we wait for the next train? Or should we ask for stuff and whatnot? Like, they're doing stuff like what they should do. But at the same time... They're thinking like we're big ponies, and since Apple Bloom survived walking through the swamp once, this should be a cakewalk for her. So yeah, they decide to take the map and head into the swamp. And yeah. there's a flaw in their logic. <laughs> yes, let's just say that uh, they got lost and they're in big trouble until they. Notice two other ponies, um, Biscuit and Spurs. So, yay, they're not far off the track. They, they just need to walk a few more meters into the path. Yay. So, anywho, they hear what Biscuit and Spurs have to say. Uh, they're arguing, and the reason they're arguing is Spurs doesn't want their to go to the fair because uh, Bruffy, their pet, is not ready while Spurs wants to take Bruffy to the fair. And they argue for a bit and ask the CMC's opinions because they're grown-up ponies. So the CMC's use this opportunity to their advantage because the two kids, uh, Biscuit and Spurs, are going to the fair. So, Logic dictates that, hey, if we ask them to go to the fair and we can tag along and stuff. So, they do so. And I'm going to stop here before we head to the fair. Tara, what do you think? Well, I'm, I'm going to first off talk about during the song. I mean, I understand no background ponies are allowed to say anything during a song. But, I mean, if someone was riding their scooter through the train or, you know, walking right over my seat and it's like, hey, you, like, uh, really? I don't even care if you're an adult. That's like, come on. This is just some dignity. But then again, they're little kids, but they wouldn't know. <laughs> and, and I guess I could say for now at this part, I mean, and. I don't know what to say, really. This episode didn't really catch my interest, because uh, what, what, what I do find funny is that the, um, the old conductor pony, where he talks about how dangerous the forest is, and they get all worried, but he's like, ah, but it's okay, you guys are adults, you'll be fine. And they basically just imply that, yeah, adults can pretty much do anything in Equestria, so, you know, we need to get there right away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. But the one, th the one moment that kind of ma that really makes me lose my interest here, is when they meet uh, uh, what's the name, Biscuit and Spurs. Mm -hmm. That's when it kind of started dying down for me. It's like, yeah, can we just get this over with? Because they talk to each other, and judging by the heights, because I don't know, you know, how the age thing works here, but with the way the height is, they look like they're older than the CMC. So once they start giving. Once they start asking for advice, and you're like, yeah, uh, we say this because we're adults. Oh, yeah, we say this because we're also adults. So be like, yeah, my goodness. <laughs> so that's the part that it killed it for you, then? Yes. Ah, all right. That's interesting. And Silver, what about you? Well, I think the song was fine and fun. It is a little weird how they're messing with all the ponies on the train. 
<laughs> That's something else. But maybe the strangest moment for me is uh, where Speedy Bell is saying, oh, there, there's no place I can't go, mountains, cities, jungles, or lakes. And there's a whale in a lake. Why is there a whale in the lake? So, so wait, that's the part that there's... bothers you? Not the part where they're filming themselves? No, Free Willy! <laughs> Except it's a humpback whale. Or is it a blue whale? Either way, it's a whale in a lake! It should not be in a lake! <laughs> Get that poor creature back into the ocean! Freedom! Where's Fluttershy? Freedom! So, so, not, so the scene them filming themselves is not the strangest part for you guys, huh? No. Dude, I'm a fan of Pinkie Pie. I've seen Stranger. Oh, okay. But I've never seen a whale in a lake! <laughs> I thought you seen Stranger. That's not strange for you. I've seen Stranger Things with Pinkie. Yeah. Norman, you're talking about silver here. Mm, true that, true that. Anyway, uh... I see... Anyway, so yeah. Also, creepy guy at the train station. Yeah, he... I, I, this is my new headcanon. There's just one of him at every train station. He's quite terrifying. <laughs> I am one with the collective. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. So what about Missy and Spurs? You know, these two didn't make a good impression. Or, I, actually, I should say they made no lasting impression. Their present, uh, one of them has Cozy Glow's hair, mane, hmm. which would probably trigger some, uh, some lingering resentment in the CMC. They never had to get over or adapt to Cozy Glow's betrayal. And yet, basically, it's just these two arguing. And that's all I know them for. They don't really have... I guess that's the thing. Right now, one of them has a goal and the other has a counter goal. Take the pet to the fair. Don't take the pet to the fair. That's it. This is different than, say, Terramar, who has a, an uncertainty, a doubt, a vulnerability. These two, we're not... There's not really anything I want them to see them succeed at. It's more, okay... What are they going to screw up? Okay, that's an interesting point of view. And yeah, I can see what you mean with Terramar. Because in Terramar's case, he has this duality of options or duality of opinions that he, quote-unquote, has to choose. Either live in the ocean or live in the land. On Sorry, on land. So there's his dilemma there. And with that, I guess he's more memorable with Biscuit and Spurs they're just there to move along the story just like the whale who's at the lake <laughs> but anywho let's carry on so they arrive at the fair and there's a lot of games there's a lot of things like there's the funny mirrors there's the get a plush bear by throwing what now uh, but by throwing horseshoes? Okay, that's cool. And then there's also dunking the big giant pony. Trouble shoes. Yay. I thought we were friends. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yay. So, while they are at the fair, um, it seems that Boofy, their pet, what you might call this, uh, what do they call the pet's name? It, it, it is a... It's Bluffy. Wor whirling <laughs> Mugtooth? Oh, yes. that's That also raises a question. I've never heard Whirling Mugtooth. I think it's a original show creation. Sure seems that way. I wouldn't know much about all the, the older generation creatures. <laughs> oh, what do you mean older generation? I don't know. I, 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 literally, this is the first generation that got me into an MLP. Don't you sass me, boy. <laughs> I give you a lot of sass, man. Sassafras. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's another thing. The only other time I remember uh, a mostly original uh, creature is the Burfogren, the frog frog. Ah, which did an appearance, I think. Yes, it appeared. It was the episode with Rainbow Dash and Rarity wondering why they're friends. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, also there's the Winter Chilla. Is it? I'll have to double check that. You never know what it might be. Ba what their fictional creatures might be based on. It's a chinchilla, but it's a snow chinchilla. And when it gets night, you know, it's a parody of the Gremlins. When it's at night, yeah, it like when it gets nighttime, it turns to a winter zilla. Uh huh. Something like that. But anywho, uh, what was it? Yes, carrying on. I'm looking at the at the gallery with screenshots, and there's a, 
under the section Welcome to the County Fair. Mm -hmm. File Adult Crusaders looking super ecstatic. That is the faces. Those are the faces of nightmares. <laughs> Those those are we will swallow your soul. <laughs> They're excited. They're really really excited to be there. To murder everything. <laughs> not yet, silver. Not yet. So anywho, carrying on. There's a random grown up pony who saw the what you call this, uh, Buffy. Let's just say Buffy, and tells them to yeah hey, you should put Buffy into the pet show. I bet Buffy can win what you call this most interesting creatures. Yay. And Biscuit here is excited because yay, I I can put Buffy into the show and Buffy can win prizes and whatnot. So yay, let's let's do that. Uh Spurs not liking the idea as the Crusaders for advice, but the Crusaders are running about having fun. They're not being responsible. There seems to be a team here. So, Spurs chew them out for it. And, well, the CMCs feel bad. So, they go to the, what, Country Fair Animal Showcase. And we can see Biscuit here uh, registering Buffy to the show. And the CMCs being quote-unquote adults decide that, hey, if you can handle um, the responsibility of sharing Buffy with your quote-unquote... Was it brother or friend? I got no idea what they are. I'm a little vague myself. I don't think it's never been adjusted in the episode if they were friends or relatives. Yeah. <laughs> their, their color tone is way off to, <laughs> to say that they're even related, but... We've seen strangers, yeah. We've seen strangers. Well, yeah. I mean, just look at the look at the pie sisters. Ah, yeah. Gray and dull, and also yeah, there's Pinky who's over excited, who's very bright. Yeah. So also Zephyr Breeze, don't forget. But there's one thing in common between them and their relative. They're the same type of ponies. Over here, we got an Earth pony and Pegasus. So. That raises the question even more. Until you talk... But then you're forgetting the cake twins! I can put a hole in any logic! Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I want to bring up. Until you bring up the pie twins. Sorry, no, the cake twins. So, yeah. Although, even I cannot discern the logic of a whale in a lake! I will belabor this point as often as I please. Thank you very much. But anywho, but anywho. So, carrying on. Uh, they tell Spurs to, you know... Uh, Take a break, leave for a bit, go go enjoy the fair, and Spurs reluctantly goes and do so because the CMCs are adults. They have what you might call this, uh, the the know-how because they say so. And Biscuit shows uh Buffy's talent, and Buffy seems to be doing well, doing great. And you can see there's a lot of sweat drops on his face, like there's something wrong. And suddenly. Spurs become the Tasmanian Devil. Okay. The time has come to reap the sins of ponies. <laughs> so... I will destroy you all! <laughs> oh, wow. So, anywho... Um... Buffy brings up a storm, turns into a huge giant tornado, and hey, there's Dorothy. Hello, Dorothy. And, yeah... The, the, huge chaos that happens, and... The CMC's got no idea and they try to calm uh, Buffy down, but it doesn't seem to work. And it seems that they need the help of an adult. I need an adult! I am an adult! Oh, boys. So, anywho, while this is happening, Twilight and Fluttershy arrives at Appaloosa and... This and figures out where the CMC could have gone, knowing that the flower is a wish kind of flower, uh, and knowing how much or how bad the CMCs wanted to go to Appaloosa, they go there and see. Yeah, let's just say that chaos is happening, and the the real grown ups are here to help. And I'm gonna pause here. 
Um, Silver, what do you think? Fluttershy to the rescue. Yay. I'm all for that. Yay. Again. Last week was Fluttershy. This week is Fluttershy. Yay. I'm not complaining. Although, I find it interesting that the ones to save are not the uh, sisters who... Imagine for a moment if Twilight and Fluttershy called Rainbow Dash, Applejack, and Rarity, and the three of them dropped everything to go find their sisters like an adult would. But no, it's two non-siblings that come to the rescue. I just find that interesting. Oh. That That is true. That is true. Well, Rainbow Dash has, has the excuse of not being in Ponyville. Rarity, I don't know. And Applejack's taking care of Big Mac. But Granny Smith could have done this that. Well, Rarity's reason why she had to finish a clothing item for Fancy Pants. Yeah, but if you know that your sister or relative is in trouble, you drop everything to save them. This is her business. Like her job. Family first. And Rarity's always family first. And Applejack even more so. Mm -hmm. And Rainbow, uh, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Given how fast she can move, maybe she just fly out Tapaloosa, whisk them back to Ponyville, and be back at the Wonderbolts yeah. in less than a minute. Probably. Uh, but still. Anyway, what I just find I just find it interesting that it's Twilight and Fluttershy who are the Crusader supporters by virtue of the fact that Pinky is off and away somewhere, mm -hmm. somehow. But probably I, 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 probably on a date with <laughs> cheese sandwich. Yeah. But you know, I I feel the logic here is that since there's no big issue. It's just the CMC is going to a fair. Um, Fluttershy and I don't need to bother the rest. We can just pick them up and lecture them about being responsible, quote unquote, adults and what it takes to be a responsible adult. Who They're not expecting some kind of uh, whirlwind happening monster beast to be there. Well, why not? It's Equestria. That, that sounds like a Tuesday. Yeah, probably, but only in Ponyville. <sighs> That's right. Appaloosa, I of your reckoning! Oh, <laughs> uh, boys. Well, anywho, uh, anything, anything more to add, Silver? Mm, well, I mean, if only we'd gotten Tin Mare Applejack, Dorothy here would have uh, completed the set. Yeah, that, that Dorothy cameo is kind of cool. And what, yeah, and what about you, Terra? Well, before I go on, I noticed a little, I wouldn't say it's an animated mistake, but it, just, it does bring uh, some questions here. Like the, the one moment where when the CMC are running around the fair, you see Shirley watching Apple Bloom swing the hammer. You didn't think she'd be like, wait a minute, Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, Sweet Bill, you look different. Did you, you gain some weight? Oh, <laughs> uh, you don't talk about a pony's weight, my friend. <laughs> Um, for me, I mean, not can't really say much for the beginning. It's just you know the CMC. Even though Spur thinks they're adults, they're basically acting like kids, and nothing wrong with acting young. I mean, you got me old, but I still try to act young. Well, it's not that I act young. I mean, I am still young, unlike you know some people. Silver. <laughs> me, me, don't you sass me, boy. I will give you a lot of sass, old man. Wow. Me, I fight fire with fire. <laughs> But, uh, like I said, it's also still kind of bugs me the way the CMC are like, yeah, we're adults, we know everything, and when Biscuit signs um, Luffy up for the pet contest, you see the thing freaking out in the box, and you, the, then you think, oh yeah, maybe we should take him away, and they're like, no, he looks like he's having fun, he just wants to get out, and then he turns into the Tasmanian Devil, and... Maybe that also explains why Pinky's not in this episode, because if she saw that, she'd be like, yeah, I'll join in. And then she makes a whirlwind of herself. A counter whirlwind, a Pinky NATO. Yep. yep. So, anywho, anything more to add? Mm, no, not really. All right, then. So, let's continue on and wrap this up. So, the CMCs and uh, the main two goes to the stadium to look at the carnage and chaos. Fluttershy is wowed and impressed because that creature there is a whirling mugtooth. Uh, what does Fluttershy say here? Um, let's just say that it's, a very, it's very rare, it's very beautiful, and when it gets super excited, it turns up a storm. So, yeah. The only way to calm it down is for its owner or for its caretaker to calm it down because they have a strong bond 
and Biscuit is not said owner because he never took care of Buffy because he always wants you know what this this makes no sense why was he yeah whatever so while the CMCs and Biscuit try to find Spurs because Spurs is the real one taking care of Buffy uh, Felicia and Twilight try to save the other ponies from the chaos when that's passed uh, we get to see Spur in the stadium and Spur's questioning like wait what that's Buffy I don't believe it so Felicia talks to Spur saying you're the only one can calm Buffy down and save Avalusa so go there and do so yay so she does and the CMCs have a lot of explaining to do so at the train station the CMCs have to tell the truth about what's going on and Twilight gave them the flower to make the wish to make them young again and Spurs and what you call this biscuit are shocked that hey you guys are not older than us you are super young oh we feel tricked and so well, so on but they didn't really take a grudge over it so they say that they don't mind hanging out again as long as you have a chevron that brings you to Appaloosa to hang out and they agree and they laugh and episode's over yay anyway Silver, what do you think? And also, final thoughts. And um, Buffy's in the box watching. I am the Alpha and the Omega. You are alive only because I will it so. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, I demand treats. Bring them unto me. <laughs> uh, probably later. But anyway. I guess here's the thing. What have the Crusaders really learned? That they got to grow up the old-fashioned way. Well, if not for the flower, that's what they would have done anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things about Big, fun, uh, oddly enough, the statement is he he actually managed a lot of success by not forgetting how to be a kid. Mm -hmm. But the advantage with him there was he was working in a toy company, which, well, kind of is interesting. I, I remember what, there was a meeting... Uh, they were pitching an idea for the robot that's a big building that can change to robots and like that. And a big building and he didn't get it. Yeah. Yes. And in the end, he created the insect the bots, the insect robots. Remember them? I forgot. The insect guns. Yes. And there was mention of Transformers for Girls, which honestly sounded like a great idea. Yeah. Why didn't anyone take that from the movie? <laughs> But here's the thing. I also thought of another show that tackled mm -hmm. this. Kids Next Door. Indeed, really? Yeah. There was an episode where the uh, perfectly wonderful children from down the lane, mm -hmm. they hit number one with a beam that aged him to an adult. Mm -hmm. And he did not get a glamorous job. He got an ice cream cart. Uh, ice cream car. Which, that's not a fun job in my eyes. The music would drive me mad <laughs> but by the end he learned that just because you're grown up doesn't mean you have to stop uh, lose that childish spirit which again was reintegrated at the end of the series so here none of that is taking place none of that is is encouraging because guess what they tried that message already in uh in going to seed going to the one where apple jack and apple bloom are trying to capture this uh, Harvest. Oh spirits. yeah, that one. That that was a good one. Yeah, the last Applejack episode. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, honestly, I kind of feel like this is a non-event, a non-message. I don't know if the Crusaders take anything away from it other than they got to grow up the old-fashioned way, and seeing as magic is not there for easy uh, access, I don't know if you could say they really learned anything at all. It's unfortunate. I mean. There's nothing offensively bad. I am glad to see the adult Crusader d models before the, the end of the series. But I'm not like... It, it doesn't make a big impact. The The supporting characters don't make a big impact. The Crusaders grown up is more of a spectacle. It It's just sort of... Eh, it's there. Hmm. Man. Yeah. I, I, feel, I feel you. I feel you. And Tara, what about you? Well, 
like I said, at first, I actually was intrigued by the episode when... Because we hear the usual plot about how, you know, kids want to do their own thing and they imagine how they be when they're growing up. And I thought, you know, my little point was going to change that. I mean, yeah, we still got the same story, but then all of a sudden they're adults and be like, oh, okay, this is interesting. I'm tempted. And then once they introduce Spur and Biscuit into the mix, and then they keep saying, yeah, we're adults, this and that, blah, blah. It's like, oh, you had me and then you lost me. And I don't really think they learned anything here. I mean, I guess the lesson is, um, I mean, I don't know if they're trying to go for this lesson, but I'm guess I guess the lesson is don't rush, uh, enjoy life while you can while you're young or something. I don't know. I didn't really get the impression on what the lesson was for this, but again, it feels like it was more. It's more of a season one or season two two esque episode where this the CMC is still learning. And I don't feel like they learn much here. It's kind of like one of those side stories in animes where they play like a funny episode and they do funny stuff just for the heck of it. And then later on, they never address it again. Mm, all right. All right. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, and I I know what you mean by those kind of episodes. And well, as for me, uh, this episode here was... How, how do I put this? When I saw what it was already... I, 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 I was like, yeah, this this storyline again, this this plot, this trope. I don't like this trope. This trope is not fun. And the thing is, I, I'm guessing that maybe I'm an adult thinking that oh, they, these kids got no idea how good they have it. Probably that's. It? I'm not 100% sure, but ponies usually have this thing where, okay, it's, it's the same trope, it's a boring old trope, maybe they can make it better, maybe, maybe they can change it for the best, but in the end, it's still the same, it, it, they, they didn't really change the formula to make it work, it felt like one of those tropey episodes where, oh, kid wish to be big. They're big now. Oh, they discover that being an adult. Did they even discover that? I don't even think so. What, that being an adult, you, you didn't finish your sentence? Sorry, sorry. Uh, that being an adult takes a lot of responsibility and a lot of, what you call this, discipline, this one. I think it's responsibility, yeah. It takes a lot of responsibility to be an adult. So, I... I, well, I think they did kind of learn that. They, did they? Like, I felt like they learned that, oh, no, we screwed up. Oh, we The, the reason why we screwed up is because we didn't learn uh, from years of experience, like how Twilight and their sisters did. We, we, we don't have, not just under our belt. It feels like they're... Missing the point. It feels that way. But you know what could have been more fun if that if it's a role reversal where instead of how do I put this? The CMC's growing big, it's the main six, just pick one, any one of them, to be a kid and hang out with the CMCs and stuff. Or maybe trade places, who knows? Maybe Apple Bloom. Or maybe Sweetie Belle and Rarity. That could have been fun. Uh, but th that's my wish episode kind of thing. Ah, you know what? Uh, overall, this episode was okay. Not the best, but eh, it's... Uh, let's just say that it's not a great send-off for the CMCs. Now, that was The Last Crusade. Yeah, that, that was a great send-off. So, anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Oh, next week we're going back into the Mouth of Madness. Oh no. Yay. We're going to be talking about Miraculous, the adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Yay. And I don't know what fresh hell awaits his Patreons. Why do you do this to us? Hmm. You know, there's a comment on the YouTube and Patreon member Tristan mentioned something about mix up. So yay, I, I thought it was a good idea. So yay. So, anywho, next week, yeah, we're going to do Ladybug. Whee! That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. 
But anywho. To you, maybe. Oh, yeah. Me. <laughs> I have embraced the madness. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at DMBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can seek me out on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can support my videos on Patreon or Ko-fi do, uh, by a Silver Quill. And if you do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear on the YouTubes. I don't know what how often you'll see me on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays posting comic reviews because comics are on pause right now. As the as this COVID-19 pandemic or is it are we at the epidemic phase yet? I'm not sure. I think so. It's a global thing to be honest. Like I asked earlier, oh, sorry, um re- earlier I asked you guys were you quote unquote self quarantine and it's an anonymous yes like Nobody's going out without a reason. So this is kind of huge. Global. Give me a reason, punk. But for now, Diamond Comics is closed indefinitely. There's a lot of talk about whether Marvel and DC and the like and IDW will even be able to sustain during this time, which is a surreal thought. Put simply, I don't know when comics will be there, but there's plenty of other material to talk about through blog posts so keep an eye on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays around midday alrighty then and Tara where can the good people find you well the good people can find me on Facebook even on Twitter or YouTube under the name Tortera1324 or they could just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms including my Patreon page and my Ko-fi page awesome 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 go do so go do so and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PuntoLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen. And I am the Young Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS Show. See ya. I shall reap the sins of the Sassafras. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so... Silver, wish you were younger. No, I wish I was within striking distance of Torterra. That's really all I need. Ah, that's not very effective, though.